Hey guys, this is Levi on the Scream at 6 show on Philly Radio, where we start screaming at 6 and don't stop until 9. If you want to call in and chat with us, call 347-237-4033. My God, what happened to the church? Why did loving turn into a waste of blood? For not having clothes on their back, or shoes on their feet. Turn me to you. We are back. Uh, we're joined with Micah Brill from uh, This Divided World. Uh, how's it going, man? Hey, it's going good, man. Good to uh, right on. Good, good to be live and not not be trapped in the screening room anymore. I know, huh? Yeah, I, I get you get claustrophobic <laughs> up in there. Uh, definitely, definitely. It's the it's uh, just being anxious. You know, you never know, know. when when you're gonna go live. Exactly. Uh, so uh, so I've been checking you out. Uh, we uh you're a studio band out of uh where you out of? Um, Western New York, Rochester, New York, uh depending on how you want to look at it. Usually I I associate with uh Rochester. That's kinda of where I when I used to play in live bands, that's where I would play, you know, that's the quote unquote big city around you know, the music scene I'm I most identify with, I guess you would say. Right, right. So uh you are a studio band and uh whenever people uh when People, uh, we had gotten into a conversation uh, on uh, through email, and you were talking about because I'm listening to it and I'm thinking, man, this is a whole band, you know. I mean, I'm just like, <laughs> man, this is fully loaded. I, I got to meet all these guys, you know. And then, <clears throat> and then you tell me that, uh, hey, just so you know, that it's me uh, and a vocalist, and I'm just like, wow, all right, here we go. So, uh, so uh, what is um, uh, what? It, tell me about th- this divided world. Uh, give me a little background history on on what the this divided world is all about. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, the the main idea behind this divided world, like I remember being about 15, I started picking up guitar, and just as I went on, I I mean, I was cur- I was mainly like a vocalist that wanted to you know learn guitar on the side so I could write songs, kind of like believe it or not, mm-hmm. like dashboard confessional and stuff like that. Okay. So as, as time went on, I got a little bit better at guitar. You know, decide to pick up other instruments. Oh, hey, I can play drums too. Oh, I can play bass. You know, I can do vocals. You know, do all these different things. And this was never like the intention, like a studio band where I pretty much do everything. But mm-hmm. you know, fast forward five years or whatever, and um, I had kind of gotten to the point where you know this perfect storm of you know easy, accessible recording technology with you know my kind of increased skills and all this kind of stuff came together and. Um, I had, like, just recently became a Christian, and, uh, you know, I had a recent falling out with a a band and stuff like that, and I was like, you know what, I've been waiting all my life to just, like, do this, you know, go for it and do it all myself, and so kind of where this Divide World started was just, like, a studio, a Christian uh, studio deathcore band, and it's actually come full circle, and that's where it is right now as well. It's it's a solo project or solo band or however you want to say that. Right now, now I mean, obviously you put out CDs and stuff like that. Um, do you uh, just go out running around and just say, "Hey, what's up, everybody? You know, here's a, here's a copy of my CD. Check it out. It's good listening music. If you want to skate, if you want to ride a bike, if you just want to, if you just want to just, I mean, because obviously you can't go out and perform shows, right? I mean, well, um, it's kind of yeah. I mean, you hit on a main point of studio bands, which is like, especially now an online presence is pretty much like, you know, that's it. But fans have been succeeding at, at being like online projects or online bands only for quite a while, you know. I mean, this is a, you know, out of genre band, but if you remember Panic at the Disco started as like one or two dudes, I think just as like a, um, just kind of like a studio band, and, and then they added the live member thing. It's, as far, if I'm remembering correctly, and so right. this is a day and age when you can do that. But I, I do really love um, – I associate with, like, the world at large. So, you know, a fan from Japan is as good as the United States to me because it, it makes no difference, you know. Mm-hmm. You got a list, You got a listener either way. But, like, local bands, they're a lot more bound to their local scene. And while I don't necessarily have that, I mean, I've gone to plenty, plenty of shows and – just like brought a stack of a hundred stickers and, you know, try and hand them out by the end of the night. So 
yeah, there's definitely a, a lack of that physical presence or whatever. But um, but I I I try to do my part to go to shows and you know be recognizable a little bit in the local scene and stuff like that. Cool. Yeah. Uh. You know. I, like I say, I'm I'm listening to it. I'm digging it. Uh. I know we got a lot of comments on it and stuff like that. Um. We got uh. So with uh. Is there, I mean, are you even kind of considering uh, putting together, you know, getting some members? Have you ever had anybody approach you and be like, dude, I would like to be your drummer for uh, this band or a guitarist or vice versa or anything like that? Yeah, for sure. Um, there's like a, there's a lot. It's like a really loaded statement for me talking mm-hmm. about being a live band. Like, trust me, um, I think one of the reasons people like being in bands for sure is like, um, it's just it's fun to play a show and it's like awesome to connect with fans on that level and um, right. I, I like playing shows as much as anybody. I've been in plenty of different different bands and even when I was just when I used to write songs acoustic, I would play out live and I love that. But mm-hmm. there's a cost to everything. Um, exactly. and 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 right now the the cost of playing live is just is just it's a it's very expensive you could say. Um, yeah. and so, you know, I think it's the reason, you know, there's certain bands that make it and certain bands that don't. And for me right now, I just kind of look at it like, you know, if, if I can put out music, put out albums and people appreciate that, sure. I want to play shows, but it's, um, I guess it's a part of my ego that I don't really need to be stroked anymore. Um, not as much. I kind of already experienced that, but you know, right. if, it, if it, if the cards, if it all lined up or whatever, I, I'd be willing to do it. It'd be fun to, yeah. to do a tour before the end of, you know, before I'm 40 years old and right, right. I'm, I'm done with it. Well, I definitely, uh, I definitely applaud you. I mean, uh, you know, I, I sit and I play music. Uh, I make my own stuff. I, I have a few programs that I write all my stuff to, you know, my guitars. I, I can uh, do my drums and everything like that, track it all together. And sometimes I enjoy myself, you know, just sitting in my in my bedroom, just creating all that and having something good to listen to. Um, you know, I have I've been out of the band scene as well for quite some time now, and uh, it did. It was not only was it expensive, but it was also it was also tiring, you know. And if you didn't have the right band, I I, I tend to fall fall into that category where I could never get along with my bandmates long enough to. Uh, we would always have great music, but we never could get along long enough to make it to the next show, you know. So that was my deal, but uh, yeah. you know, I heard. Uh, so getting into a little more personal stuff, you said uh, uh, how long? How long? When was it that you came to Christ? Um, it's been something like. Uh, well, let me think about it. It's been something like three and three and a little bit years now. Mm-hmm. Um, I grew up in a Christian home, and you know, granted, all you know, we had our struggles in the family and it wasn't a perfect family or anything like that but you know it was we went to Sunday school and stuff like that and um you know typical typical things and stuff like that and just like at a I don't know between middle school and high school I just kind of maybe I guess just unanswered questions or I don't know Mm -hmm. a few a few different things and I just there was a point you know where I just said you know, I'm going to do my own thing. Like, I don't believe in this garbage. You know, this is, this just isn't for me. And, and I just, you know, was, became the prodigal son. And, um, so kind of ran as far off the path, about as far off the path as you can go and just had a crazy encounter with, with Jesus where, you know, he became so real to me. And, um, you know, I, I couldn't I couldn't deny it, you know, to to have denied him before that, that that's one thing, but to um to have denied him after the experience and just the crazy things that happened to me, you know, just being I mean, God revealing himself to me, um, I, I right. knew no matter what decision I made, I, I couldn't ever unknow. You know, I couldn't ever that couldn't ever come um be taken away from me, you know. So that that weight of um, of truth was always going to be in my life, and ever since then, I mean, granted, I've you know made plenty of mistakes since I came to Christ, and um, you know, not perfect and all that stuff, but I've chosen to 
begin to walk in the direction towards him, you know, as opposed to before that walking away from him. Right. Yeah, you know, I I find that uh, I wasn't, uh, didn't grow up in a a Christian home, and I've basically been a Christian for five months, or I've been, I've had a relationship with Christ uh, for for the last five months, Um, you know, and I, I find it, I find it very hard to, you know, I can only imagine what it's like for somebody who was born and raised, had had all these uh, things given to them and passed down to them, uh, opened up for them, and read to them as a child, whereas I had the whole world kind of coming in on me, and for me yeah. to come out of that, it was, it's, I just can't imagine what somebody like that would go through whenever they, you know, whenever they get hit real hard and they fall to their knees, like I fell to my knees, totally different, in, you know, environment, but, you know, I mean, uh, we all have to go through our through our our downfalls, you know, before we can actually realize we it's a it's a coming of a man, you know, when we we kind of wake up out of ourselves and and uh, everybody wants to experience something else. That's kind of how I ended up here with uh, Jesus uh, as my as my friend, you know, as my father, as my figure, um, you know. But um, so with uh, with that being said, I mean, does. Do you uh, fully uh, indulge Christ, in, in the Christ life, into uh, this divided world? Yeah, and that was always the intention too. You know, mm-hmm. I, I, honestly, um, I had a. There was a lot of. I mean, I, I've been a, a piece of clay that's been molded, and you know, of course, until until we die, we're going to continue to be molded. But if I just, you know started a list right now and just went through all the things that have changed me. It's it's insane how much God's, you know, changed my life, my heart and and everything. But um but uh, but as soon as I like when I made that decision, um I had been in a, a metal band at the time. It was like a party metal band. And so, you know, it was like a whole crew mentality thing, you know. It was like all all my friends, like we all hung out together, we all worked together, we all partied together. We all like you know band practice was just like hanging out. It was it was partying, but we happened to play music, and so it was a an abrupt transition for me and everyone in my circle. It, you know it, it it changed everything, and so you know there was this slow slow transition. But like um, God spoke to me that like I I couldn't be in this band anymore. I couldn't be a part of this band anymore, and it, and it literally broke my heart. I mean, right. there's not too many things I that will make me cry in, in life, and this was one of them. I just remember breaking down in tears, like, like it felt like everything that I loved was being was being ripped from my possession, and um, and so after that, it was like I got to a point almost where I was like, I don't care about music anymore. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you just get to a point where you're like, I don't want to be disappointed anymore, and so. But, you know, anyways, God kind of restored that and continued my love for music. And um, and so I just became obsessed with, like, I had gone from kind of this, like, metalcore thing to, like, all right, the most brutal stuff that's out there, that's what I want. And mm-hmm. and as I kind of went was listening to, you know, all these bands and all this really brutal stuff, I noticed that, like, I could find a hundred um, a hundred brutal bands of the, of the world to one good Christian, you know, brutal metal band, whether that be death metal, death core, you know, whatever, grind or even anything like that. And right. so, like, I just said, you know what, I'm going to make the music that I want to listen to, <laughs> you know, because I couldn't, I, I was having a really hard time finding it. And so that's pretty much the birth of this divided world. It was like yeah. I created the, the music that I wished that I could find. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <clears throat> so, does um, you know, touching base on you know, you were talking about how God speaking to you and how you you had to get out of the out of the band, you know, and how it crushed everything that you that you love, you know. Does what is the what is like now? How long ago was that 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 you uh, that you had to go through all that? About three years. It was it was right in. Oh. I mean, it, it was related. Okay. It was like right in with my convert conversion, or however you want to say that. My meeting Jesus. Okay. Well, so looking back three years ago, 
I'm sorry if if you t- touched on this. I was I was in the studio, but looking back on that um, and knowing the decision that you made uh, today, what what is your strength today? Um, can you just like specify that a little bit more? I'm just a little unsure. Well, well, like I mean, thinking about it, does it does it empower you? Like do you, having revelation into your life, you know, and and understanding. Do, is it something that oh. that you? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I I completely understand it now because it's like God was saying he you have to give up everything when you come to Christ. You know what I mean? And right. the thing is, like, he's gonna restore all that. Anyways, look at I'm I'm I'm. I'm, I've been in plenty of bands in my life, and this is the most successful band that I've been in, you know, this divided world, and it's the only one that I've given glory to God with, you know? And so right. he, he more than restored it, you know what I mean? He he did yeah. way more than re- just give me back what I had, but he wanted to know that I was willing to give that up. And, you know, wh- what I've learned is, is that God always wants the thing that you hold most dear, you know? And especially when when you're coming to him, you're willing to lay it all on the line. And so when I think of the story of the young rich man, everyone thinks, well, do I have to go and sell all my possessions? You Mm -hmm. know, it's like, no, it was because he was rich. Like, he loved money. So he had to give up his money. And so for Micah Brill, when I came to Christ and I said, what did I do to inherit the kingdom of heaven? He was like, you have to leave your band, you know. I want what's most precious to you, what you most love, and mm-hmm. and that's that's what I want. And so for me, it was the hardest, like I said, it was the hardest thing I had to do at that point. But but look how much more he's, he's restored it. And, I mean, he's increased it so much. And it's just like it, it blows that other band and all that other stuff out of the water. So, yeah, absolutely, like, Definitely, it makes sense now, and I get it. But at the time, it was just—it was just like, you know, you're confused. How can you know in the moment? It's really difficult. Right, right. Well, you know, uh, we do a little thing, uh, and I didn't know if this was the direction we were going to go. I thought I kind of just let God go into it uh, as He sees fit. That's kind of what we do here on Philly Radio for all you guys listening out there. Uh, we, we've made ourselves the willing vessel uh, to, for God to speak to us, and we try to bring you uh, the news of God, the Word of God, and, and everything in between. And we have fun while doing it. We, we, uh, we're just a bunch of metalheads who, who love to mosh for Christ. And, um, you know, on Tuesdays, we do this thing called Testimony Tuesdays, and uh, like I say, uh, Mike, I didn't know if it was going to kind of get in this direction, but I do. Uh, I appreciate you opening up with us and uh, and talking about this. There's a lot of people out there who listen, and they uh, a lot of times they they listen because of the music, but they also they also are curious about the lifestyle. So I do applaud you, sir. And uh, we're going to go to this next track uh, from this divided world. It is off the album When Darkness Reigns, and this is the East and the West right here on Filio Radio. <laughs> 